This video is sponsored by Skillshare, so keep watching to find out more about that, or check the description for more details. Hello, Ava, make up, subscribe, watch the video. So... So we're just gonna work something out, mm-hmm. And you all should count yourselves lucky, privileged, I might say. Because I want nothing more than to just jam to music while I'm doing this, but she thought she'd give you the content. So I'm gonna start off by um, grooming these brows because I really can't be bothered gluing them down for the sake of the look. Truly, really honestly, can't be bothered. I was just thinking about it and it was upsetting me. Oh, and my skin feels so flaky, wakey, cakey, bakey today. Um, step one primer. But I like a lot of primer. I like a slick, wet face. Now that we're red wall, this Krylon paint stick in 2W. Ow, God. Do a bit of spot concealing. Now, I want to make myself look kind of tanned, kind of better because... I don't know why, I just want him. And the outfit I'm wearing is gonna show off the arms. I don't care, I just don't care. To really emphasize how high and lifted it is, I'm gonna take the white right up to and even slightly onto the brow. So you're not confused, it's up here. FS36, around the perimeter, quite generously because I do wanna be a little darker today. <gasps> so like, maybe like, Oh, oh jeez, this is terrible. <gasps> we are gonna go over this with a foundation though, probably. I can't believe I used to be like, not into foundation brushes and purely just the blender. This is just so much nice. Strategy is to wear an outfit with a lot of accessories, so this whole situation doesn't get noticed. Oh my God. But it's just, it's tan, you guys. I do like how being a darker, a more healthy, not deathly white vampire shade, really makes, 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 makes the, makes, makes the white stand out. I basically just do two layers of foundation, really, don't I? The elf one is horrible and sheer, but it's nice to kind of help spread it around and just get it around all my face. And this one is, um, amazing. Oh, they both smell so nice, though. I love the smell of makeup. I'm gonna go in, not with the white, but with the one W. Um, and that's how I know if this is going well, because look, that looks like a highlight shade. This is normally my mid-tone, like, skin colour. So I like brightening my chin, um, because I want it to look pointy. And, like, small and little, because I have a complex. And I know you probably sit up there thinking, No, it's the smallest chin in the world, you're just, you're a woman. I look pretty, right, no one told me how nice my eye colour was. Right, so now the white, and we're going to be very careful with this. I'm going to go back under the eyebrows, because I just really like a bright under eye. So then when I'm blending that, I like to pull it out in a straight line, pretty much like well, like an angled straight line, because this is suggesting where, when I draw the eyebrow on, where it's going to go. So then, oh, I'm going to take just a little bit. Look at that. Yes, the white. We're doing this to really wake ourselves up. Because, you know, you've been unable to sleep, and you've got the insomnia, and you're depressed, and life is just kind of putting you in a place where you just need to artificially make yourself look awake because you're dying um that's not me but if that's you here you go it's just i always complain about my sleeping pattern but at the same time i'm so bored of complaining about my sleeping pattern so i fixed it right so i was i usually contour with like this thing and everyone kind of gives me the business for it because it's literally mahogany it's literally like concealer for like mahogany skin people in case you didn't notice i am one of the most caucasian people to have existed but i use it to contour because i really like cool tones um, for shadows, I just think it looks better than warm tones, especially on someone deathly pale like me. So what I do is I put little blobs of this, and then I blend them out, and it's like, it just saves me spending a fortune on like lots of little contour pots, because this thing will last me forever. You can't, there's a certain point at which you've contoured too much, and you've just made the area darker. So then you haven't changed the dimensions of the area, because you've just made the area as a whole shift a tone. Whereas contouring, you are changing the specific parts of areas like you contour your cheek you change like <laughs> you're all you're using colors to adjust the angles and how those areas look and interact with the light that doesn't work if you just change the whole area 
Does that make sense? I don't really know. Like, say, if I want to contour my chin, I have to strategically contour the corners of it. If I just paint my whole chin brown, my chin is going to look the same shape, but brown. Whereas here, we're creating a contrast with lights and darks to make it look like the light is hitting it differently. To make it look like, rather than ending here where it does, and making it look like it ends here. And then this bit is where it all starts to wrap back around. You're not here to learn, are you? If you are, great, but I'm pretty sure you're just here to hang out. So we're going to talk about things. On that note, if you do want to learn, let's take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. In case you haven't heard, Skillshare is a platform full of tons of classes for creatives, creators, and the generally curious, all by a massive community of, well, skilled people. Whether it's perfecting skills you already have, further exploring something you're passionate about, or wanting to better embrace your creative side, Skillshare has something for you. Start off on a beginner level, dabble in being a pro, or jump right into a masterclass, it's all there. I myself do all sorts over here on this channel, makeup, drag, fashion, illustration, there's a bunch of classes that have piqued my interest, and stand to benefit me greatly because apparently I just do it all. I've been enjoying being on the other end of the tutorial uh, for the first time in a while. This class is on pretty much anything though, I'm currently enjoying digital illustration. Design your avatar by designer and illustrator Ryan Putnam. As an illustrator myself, I was intrigued. I've written a lot about avatars and how we express ourselves and our characteristics through various mediums. I mean, that's basically drag too. Getting to listen to him talk about translating defining characteristics into a simplified visualisation, and also getting to watch him do just that, well, it's pretty cool. And I like drawing, and now I want to draw. Now let's talk numbers, and it's good news. A yearly subscription is less than $10 a month, and that gets you absolutely unlimited access to this wealth of community-driven information, and it gets even better. There's no ads, and there's always new classes, even live ones. There's a link in my description where you can get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity. You can go and see what all the fuss is about for yourself, and that's a personal link just for my viewers, so feel special. And a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Best believe the content's getting good if she's getting sponsors now. And now I'll go back to talking about whatever I was talking about. But also I'm going to teach you makeup. So here I like to actually contour the tip of my nose. Now a lot of queens, when they contour their nose, they contour the nose and then they leave the tip out and you end up with a really wide tip. You want to try and add that structure to your nose. I think most of it is in the tip. Whereas once you leave the tip out, you, you it just looks like your normal nose shape again because... But then also, I don't think everyone really needs to contour their nose that much either. With me, I like it because it's a part of my drag aesthetics. It's just really harsh and, and, you know, funny. If you contour away your nose, your cheek now comes all the way here. So now your cheek goes from here to here. Like, you're making your nose smaller, but that negative space has to take up something else now. Say with me, with the proportions of my face out of drag, I like the size of my nose and sometimes I think I could look cuter if I had a bigger nose. It's all a balance and a lot of people don't consider that, they just think I want smaller, but it doesn't really work. Here I am also making sure not just to go up to my, um, where the brow goes up, but also slightly higher. So my nose ends here, but I bring it up here, kind of wraps around into the socket and I want to lift my socket line. So then that gives me a bit more eye space to work with. If I have a higher cheekbone, my jaw takes up all this space. I don't want a big jaw. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the cheek down a bit onto the jaw. Take up some of that jaw room with cheekbone because then my cheek looks bigger, my jaw looks smaller. And I don't want a big jaw. A dot there and a dot there. See those dots? And look how far it goes. So then you see the line, the main blend line. That's where I start to take lighter brush strokes and really like blend them. So then we're getting the lovely little beige rainbow. Light colour, lighter, <laughs> mid-tone, darker, darkest. And f there, it makes my head look like a lovely little ball. Okay, so I think that's the cream part done. Sketch out the eyebrows and then set the whole face with powder. So even if I want to do blonde eyebrows lately, I'm in the habit of, when in this cream stage, drawing them on with a dark brown pencil. Um, because I know I'm going to go over the whole face with powder, so it just kind of... I would rather put powder on top of a brown to turn it into blonde than have to put blonde on, powder, and then redo it again. Also, if you're using your real brow hair, I like to use a darker colour, because then when I go outside of the shape of my brow, like this, they kind of look the same colour. Uh, brow hairs add a lot of texture and shadow to whatever colour you're drawing on, and I see a lot of people draw on, like they'll have the nubs, and then they draw on like a brow 
that is with the same color all the way through and you can just see um, it's like an eyebrow but then you can see the first bit is darker with nub and the rest of it is just smooth and lighter where there's no hair so I like to kind of make it look a consistent color all the way through by compensating for the fact that there's hair here but not here then I go in with a blonde pencil and really kind of merge the two together I, I like my eyebrows to be kind of quite raised in the center which can give you a kind of sorry look but I just think that's cute and feminine rather than looking like angry all the time which we kind of get anyway because I draw them so close together which works in proportion with the smaller nose but I just don't like to bring them in and down which is fierce but I just like mine to look like you know straighter because then I just look I don't know I like it that's just how I do it to go back in with the white paint stick and just kind of clean up underneath the eyebrow just swipe some white on right up under there just like that just a completely unblended dot on the tip of the nose because from a distance that is just going to look like a little gleam of light so i'm going to start by putting that in between the brows and slightly onto the brows to really lighten the inner brow and give us that that ombre and then i'm also going to put this everywhere we highlighted um i'm doing this not only to set the highlight but mostly to catch eyeshadow when we do it and here's the second one, which turns out isn't a bronzer or a contour powder, but in fact a pressed powder. I think it's clever. I, d I can't be out here spending loads of money on contour products when I could just buy a pressed powder. This has lasted me years. I genuinely think I bought it in 2015. I think the powder part is good for the chin, because you get to do this, like, whittling down motion. I was going to say, you don't want to look like you've got a separate head to your body, but I really actually don't mind that look. Big fluffy powder brush, and I'm just going to... Circular motions, everything into itself. We're just looking much better. Still, still an incredibly different skin <laughs> in terms of the normal, but. I uh, don't know what colour eyes to do. I'm wearing. Um, what am I wearing? I'm wearing like pink. Oh, yeah, whatever. We'll do pink. I should have wore pink hair, really, because it would have gone with the whole theme, but I decided to pull out the yellow wig. Pink and yellow looks nice, I guess. Gonna take the ineffable Bad Bunny palette, which I did a review of this. It's not gonna be up. I did a review when I was drunk and my skin was terrible, so if it's up, God help you. I like this. I'm gonna take the shade Bunny because it's just a really good, quintessential pink. Oh. Should I zoom in? I feel like every time I zoom into my eyes, I'm so glad I did. I'm gonna take this up to the brow. <gasps> Should I take it even into the brow? People do that these days. You know what, I can't even lie, I can't even fib, and I can only tell the truth. That's stunning. Blummin' stunning. <laughs> oh! How far along the brow do I wanna take this? Do I wanna, how far are we taking this? We're, we're too powerful. Now before I go any further, I'm going to do the same on this eye because I can't stand it when people do full eye looks on one eye, not the other. Just do your makeup like a normal person, for God's sake. How are you going to do like a million steps and then try and remember them for the other eye? I mean, yeah, it's easy, but... <gasps> the worst is when they've already done the eye and they're like, so here's the eye, so I'm just going to do it on this eye and show you how I did it. It's like, great, thanks for the spoiler. <laughs> I get really into it. We're going to take... Boiler, which is a red. How often do you see a red? I'm telling you now, like, you see a red. <gasps> and I want it to be red. I don't know how much eyeliner I'm doing yet. I'm gonna pull this red up. Like a wing. And then with this brush that has the pink still on it. Blend, pull it out, all that. So I actually am going to try and keep the tail of my brow highlighted white, because then it just kind of looks nice. Oh, it's kind of like 80s. I don't remember the 80s very well. Um, without cheating, how old do you think I am? Do this, because I don't know why, I just can't resist. I just had to do that. I'm sorry. Oh! 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 So I'm trying not to do the world's heaviest liner like always. Oh! <gasps> Tell you what. I might be stunning. <gasps> I just, I was looking in the mirror doing my eye makeup and I was just like, caught myself looking at myself and I got really uncomfortable <laughs> with the eye contact. 
Look at that. Look what I did. Absolutely that. And then while we're here, I'm going to do a line on the extended inner corner, but I'm going to try something. I'm not going to put it under the black line, but I'm actually going to put it a little bit under the shadow. So that's our extended inner waterline, but you can see it's underneath the liner. You see what it does? Favors. I'm going to do a black liner under the white line. And you also want to be careful with your eye bag and everything. Um, you don't want it to like dip and go, you've got to compensate for all these weird dips and stuff. So now I'm going to dip it into, why is it always dip into? I'm going to dip it to fluffy, which is this orange color. Nananha. The orange is subtle, but it's there. But these, la these eyes are it. Just onto the cheeks a bit. And I think that'll just kind of like make everything make sense. Let me just say, not one bit of fallout, so either I'm very good at makeup or it's a very clean palette. Maybe a bit of both. There's some good feedback for you, give me free stuff. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <sighs> and the two together are an unstoppable force that can't be stopped. Now I don't want to put too much on, but at the same time I do want to put a lot on. Also, the littlest amount, it's more effective if you wear less, because then when it catches the light, it's not just like your whole cheek. I can't stand it when people put highlighter on in a video and every single time act like it's their first time wearing highlighter and they're like, ah, <gasps> oh, ah, oh, sure. I'm gonna take my faithful color obsession in hook up. I worded that wrong, but I don't care. And I just think like a brown liner kind of goes with anything. I like to do this because then it makes me look like I'm constantly smiling and it's a good way to overdraw without looking too clowny. Speaking of lipstick, it's that time. It's another one of the ineffable Sumi lip kits in the colour Fuego. Comes with a liner and the lipstick. And it's like a lovely orange colour. And I just think orange lipstick's so cool. Um, now these aren't matte, which I love the feeling of. But I overdraw my lips, so I need a bit of matte. But we'll try it. If I'm not satisfied with how the overdrawn part looks, I could set it with eyeshadow or I could go over it with a pink. Is the makeup done? I think the makeup's done. <gasps> That's so fun. So I'm going to put on some lashes, my outfit, my whole wig, and maybe, maybe some glare. But for now, that's the makeup done. So, I'll be right back. Voila. <laughs> and here is the finished look. So I wanted in some way to kind of echo the, um, the direction, visually, of chromatica. Pinks, purple, no pinks, yeah. Pinks, reds, and very, like, a modern gothic thing. Which, I, so I decided to do none of that. <laughs> Pink and the makeup and the lips and all that. This thing is gothic and it's a crown, which is just fabulous. Um, then I'm wearing a bunch of accessories that you can't even see, whatever, and then a pink top. Um, also, this thing is really tight, really uncomfortable, and I can't, like, breathe, but, yeah, that's all. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you watched it, if you got to this point, then, um, do that thing where people leave secret emojis in, like, the comments or whatever, and make it, um, a yellow heart. Yellow. Like my hair. No, I have so many videos on my channel. I've been uploading videos regularly, once a week, sometimes twice a week for like years now with a few gaps, usually gaps that are when I get robbed and hacked. <gasps> Find out all about it. Yeah, so please, I would appreciate it a lot if you could subscribe. More so especially if you were to click that bell after you subscribe and it means you get notifications and it means you see my videos and I would just want to get seen. I love it check out all my older videos and then also keep up with me on social media the main one is instagram which is ava cassandra it's right there Ooh. yeah yeah like yeah <coughs> so for now bye